What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Ryan here, aka the Broken Ryan five five three two nine eight. What's going on? Uh, I got some PlayStation news for you. Uh, this one right here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with this right here. Uh, this is pertaining. Uh, this is pertaining uh, Resident Evil. Okay, Resident Evil. We already know Resident Evil has been on a downcline. Seriously, a serious downcline. Now, Resident Evil Seven is good. I do like Resident Evil Seven. I like the new twist on it. I like the first person view, whatever. That's cool. But at the same time, it's not le the legit Resident Evil that we grew up on. So, with that being said, it does have, you know, a lot to live up to in terms of the other ones. But it does all right for what a new twist. I like the new twist that they've done with this. It actually is more cool this way. But a lot of people would prefer the original, and that's how I am. Now, as far as the original is concerned, we're not getting the original anymore. Pretty well, we're not getting like you know the good originals like we why we used to. And the thing about the original is just <clears throat> Capcom, man. They just milked these games to the point where nobody cares. As you clearly see right there, Resident Evil Seven sales pale in comparison to the previous games six months on. Now. I'm not about to go ahead and get into this all the way. I'm going to link it in the description below, but it shows the figures. Uh, Resident Evil 7 also, uh, failed to hit Capcom's internal expectations for shipping uh, 4 million by March 2017. Uh, considering they also forecast an additional 2 million this fiscal year and have only moved 200,000 units so far. And um, I don't blame the game. I really don't. I don't blame Resident Evil 7. I don't blame the cast of Resident Evil 7. They did a good job on the game. The problem is Capcom. Capcom, if you notice their trend, it's been Resident Evil, Street Fighter, more Resident Evil, Street Fighter, more Resident Evil, Street Fighter. That's all they've been doing. And they're surprised that the game's not selling well. They're surprised the game's not selling, period. You're milked it to death. You know, and the only, like literally, Capcom can easily turn this around if they invest in the game that we actually want. I know all of us will jump out our seats right now if Sony or they came out and, and like you know said, "Hey, look, Sony helped us get this game off the ground." Marvel or uh, Capcom vs. SNK two and Capcom vs. SNK remastered are coming exclusively to, uh, exclusively to the PlayStation Four. That would sell. You know what I'm saying? That's something to buy. Uh, Capcom just doesn't have anything. Doesn't have anything. And that's the sad part. I'm a big Capcom fan, but I'm like, dude, dude come on, man. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite could have been so awesome if they if they actually focus on the roster. But instead, they want to push the movie. That's all they did. If you look at the roster, that every person from that roster is legit in the movie. Minus a few, but let's be real here. The majority of that roster is from the movie. You got Rocket, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you got all this crap. You got Rocket, you got damn uh, Dr. Strange, Black Panther. I mean, come on, man. So what do you care about these characters? You know, I'm pretty sure Ant-Man's in here. You know, obviously Hulk. You got uh, Thor and Iron Man and all this jazz. All, and, of course, they implemented the Infinity Stones. The Infinity Stones. They're now part of the gameplay. It's like, come on, man. You had so much premise you could have done with this, but it's like... You decide to go out this way. I mean, I like I like uh, Capcom, but it's like Capcom. You just you do shit like this that that angers me. You really do. So uh, that's it for Capcom. Uh, all links in the description below. Don't worry. Okay, Dead Alliance Beta is coming to the PlayStation Four. Actually, this this was actually for yesterday. I missed this. I'm sorry, guys. I did not see this. Like I said. News comes out, and uh, sometimes it'll be, like, late, and I didn't see this. But apparently, this came out yesterday. This is a beta. I got to download this. I'll play this with you guys. You guys want to play. Uh, it's available until July 31st. So, um, yeah, I'm definitely going to download this. As soon as I'm done with recording, I'm going to go down uh, download this. That's cool. That's cool. So, there you go. Dragon Quest XI won't be on PS Vita, but it still looks uh, great via PS4 Remote Play. Okay. So the Vita is officially definitely being killed off. I mean, it's not getting uh, that much part. It's getting it's getting some games in Japan, but it's not getting crazy amounts, you know. And let's face it, I already did my uh, 
my video on it and uh, we talked about the PS Vita 2 and that's already kind of been debunked by uh, Sean Layton. He basically said, hey, look, it didn't sell, you know, it didn't hit, it didn't reach the milestone that we wanted, we wanted. So, you know, odds are for part two are very not likely. So there you go. Okay. Hellblade uh, Senua Sacrifice gets PS4 Pro support with resolution and frame rate modes. That's cool. That's cool. Um, question is, is this, uh, it's exclusive? Let's see here. Okay, it's on PC. So, I guess it's a PC and PlayStation thing. Okay, so it's not really exclusive. It's a console type of exclusive, but it's not really exclusive. Okay, so let's go down. Um, we have two modes, resolution or frame rate. Okay, so you have a choice between them. That's cool. That's good. So, let's say uh, you'll be able to choose between enhanced resolution or a higher frame rate targeting uh, 60 frames per second. There are also news for fans on PC as your gaming rig will be able to run it or, or to run if it has the necessary juice. Okay. All right. So there you go. All links in the description. That's nice. That's cool. I want to go all that. So I don't, I, I want to get to uh, to these uh, topics as quickly as possible. That's why I'm not like going all out reading. I'm sorry. I know I usually, I know you guys used to be reading it. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, for South America, the PS uh, Plus games for August. Uh, you're not getting Just Cause Three. For South American uh, PlayStation Plus users, you're not getting uh, Just Cause Three. You're getting Strike uh, Vector. Never heard of that game. Never heard of Strike Vector X, but hopefully it's good. I mean, that sucks if you're not getting Just Cause 3, but you know, hopefully it's good. So there you go. For Asia, uh, Asian guys are getting, or Asian gamers, I'm sorry, are getting a, um, a spooky surprise with uh, August uh, you know, free games. Obviously, you know, there's a free theme out also on the PlayStation Store now. You can download for August. Uh, it's a free theme for PlayStation Plus, so you can go check that out. I have not tried it yet. I forgot to try it, but I haven't tried it yet. Uh, as far as for August in Cerno, though, for Asia, uh, you will be getting Amnesia Collection, Child of Light, Assassin's Creed Freedom Cry, Hustle Kings, and Downwell. So instead of, uh, what's that game, uh, Just Cause, you'll be getting Amnesia of uh, the Amnesia Collection. So that's cool. There you go for uh, Japan. And this right here is the uh, final news for the day. This was right here I kind of saw coming. I, I kind of saw this coming. Now, obviously, everybody knows that um, Sony increased the, uh, the, the uh, I'm sorry, the price of uh, PlayStation Plus for North America. It's no longer $50. It's $60. The, you know, the same as a game, $60. Bucks. Uh, they increased that, you know, a while back. And a lot of people wonder, hmm, will they ever do it to like, you know, to Europe or UK and Asia and so on? Well, it's officially happening, guys. Uh, it'll be happening. Um, it'll come into play in August. So you guys better, you know, if you guys got to renew your subscriptions. You better go ahead and do it now. Otherwise, you're going to be paying an additional $10. Um, basically, 50 euros, if I'm not mistaken. If I, if, I, if I got my currency right, 50 euros is the same as $60 uh, in uh, North America. So, yeah, that's about right. So, 50 euros is now uh, 50 euros in uh, Europe and UK, the annual subscription. So, the annual subscription went from 39 euros or 39.99 euros to 49.99 euros. For the quarterly subscription, it went from 14.99 euros to 19.99 euros. And for the monthly subscriptions, you went from 5.99 euros to 6 99 euros so that's pretty cool i mean i'm mean, not cool but uh, that's that's what happened i'm sorry <laughs> but um there you go that's the uh increase um let's see did i talk about the games for europe did i say here no so i guess europe's getting the same as uh, the u.s for in terms of uh free games so you're getting just cause three you're getting freedom cry uh down well and that other games, so you're, you're getting the same games as U.S. Um, it, it, I knew it was going to happen eventually. I mean, let's be real here, guys. If you look at the PS3, PS3 servers are still online. Let that sink in. PS3 servers are still online. The question is, when is Sony going to pull the plug on PS3? The moment they pull the plug on PS3, I guarantee you subscriptions are going to go back down to 50. I'm just calling that right now. It makes no sense for them to keep charging 60 if... Uh, 
you know, they don't have an extra network, you know, they have to support, you know, that's the only reason I would have to say that I justify this a little bit, not by a lot, not by a lot, not by a lot at all, I would say it justifies a little teeny bit, because they're actually supporting, you know, the last gen hardware uh, users, so that's where my kind of stance is on, but I get where a lot of you would be upset about, I, I was upset with the US uh, increase, I was upset, so um, you, you get what I'm coming from, uh, I think they should just go ahead and just drop the PS3's uh, servers, you know, they're no longer selling it, if I'm not mistaken, or they are selling it, but they about the, they need to stop uh, selling it event, or <laughs> completely. You know, it's it's already over. I mean, it's the point of selling it. Sell it, just like end it. End it and just, you know, <laughs> end those servers, man, so we can go back to uh, good old gaming. But something tells me they won't do that. They're probably going to wait till PlayStation 5 to actually kill, kill those servers. I mean, let's face it, you know, 2019 is the birthday of PlayStation, if I'm not mistaken, 20, uh, 25 years of PlayStation would be uh, in 2019, or something, something, something big's happened in 2019, uh, so in 2019, I'm expecting some uh, huge announcements, obviously, obviously we got PSX, we got Tokyo Game Show this year, hopefully there's going to be something in those, uh, you know, events, I hope so, I, I know, I know for a fact we got two things we got to look for uh, to from Tokyo Game Show and PSX. We got Sucker Punch's new IP, and we got uh, From Software's new IP. At least I think it's a new IP. Otherwise, it's a Bloodborne 2. It's one of those two things. So it could be Bloodborne 2 or a new IP from those two, or from that one particular developer. And uh, obviously, Sucker Punch's new IP. So there's a lot of stuff we got to look forward to uh, on top of that as well. There could be uh, the announcement of Spyro the Dragon remastered. Remember that? Could be an announcement of that. There's a lot of stuff that's uh, definitely on the service. Obviously, we got Death Stranding and vice versa. So we're definitely going to be, uh, we're definitely going to have our, uh, you know, questions answered. Hopefully, uh, at least by PSX. Not PSX. Tokyo Game Show will be the final one that answers all the questions. But um, that's pretty much it for the most part. Uh, that's all I can really talk to, talk about right now. I mean, it's not really much I can go on. I mean, they're just they're increasing the price, and the only thing I can think of logically is to support you know PS3 users on the PlayStation 3 and vice versa, you know, I don't think they're doing it just to fatten the pocket, nah, they're not doing that to fatten the pocket, if they are doing that to fatten the pocket, then something tells me, then, if they are doing that, then, one, one thing Sony has proven this gen, your money is going well spent, I mean, we can all agree in unison, your money's going well spent, you know, they're, they're investing in games, they're giving you new IPs, cooler experiences, newer experiences, so, if they are doing it just to support that and get more games out there, I'm all for it. But at the same time, you got to give me something in return. You got to give me something in return to tie me over to make the yearly subscription worth it. That's why I do. I usually buy the year. I don't buy the monthlies. I don't know about you guys. I don't buy the monthlies. Monthlies, I think, are just silly. I would rather buy the yearly, get over with, one-time payment, get over with. I'll worry about it when my eventual, um, you know, renew date has to happen, you know. I'll worry about it then. Uh, but that's it, that's it, I'm kind of rambling at this point, but uh, that's it, hope you guys enjoyed the video, if you did, make sure you smash the like button, appreciate everybody who uh, supported the last video, hope you guys liked the intro, uh, for, uh, just for this particular a aspect of this, um, the channel, obviously, so I appreciate everybody again for all your support, I'll see you guys later, and, uh, yeah, I got some, uh, other stuff I need to talk about, so, I'll see you guys later again, and thank you guys again, you guys be good, happy gaming, deuces.